Go ahead. Pastor Artie, I would love to have one of your cheer up talks. <laughs> <laughs> How are you today? Oh, uh, well, uh, no doctors and no medicine and uh, no bills okay. and no and no pain. So pretty good. How are you today? I'm wonderful. You know, the Bible says the very heart says good like the medicine, so maybe we could use the joke. <laughs> All right. What did you say the Bible said? What did it say? A uh, free heart. No, you free just... Free heart says, says no. good like a medicine. All right. Ask me a joke then. Oh, it's a joke. Uh, well, a man was in the Oval Office, and he saw a gold phone. And they said, you can talk to God on that phone. And he called up God, and he talked for three minutes. And he said, what do I owe you? And they said, $300. A month later, the man was transferred to Israel, and he saw a gold phone, and he talked to God for three minutes. And he said, how much do I owe you? And they said, $3. And he says, what? I paid $300 in the White House. And they said, over here, it's a local call. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. That is. Do you have a, a cheer-up message for us? Sure, I have something interesting today. I wanted to talk about Mark chapter 11 today. Oh, good. Yeah, it's the story about Jesus going up, getting up in the morning and going for breakfast. And he goes to get the figs and he goes to the tree and there's no figs, there's no figs on the tree. So he's a little upset, and he curses the tree and says, let no one eat from you ever again. So the next day, uh, Peter said, and it says in Mark eleven twenty, it says, now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. Now, Jesus' reply is very interesting, because he says this, he says, Now, so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. So, if we stop right there for a minute and think about it, uh, you know, Peter notices that what Jesus said actually happened. And notice what Jesus said, he didn't say, you know, don't try this at home. <laughs> you know, you've, you've seen those stunts, right? They say, don't try it at home. Um, okay. He said, okay. He said, "Have faith in God." One of the one of the the uh, version says, "Trust in God's faithfulness." Oh yes. Now, now I think that ninety nine percent of everybody's problems could be solved with those <coughs> words. Well, so Have do I. Okay. So do I. I think that I too. 99% of all the problems that we have, everything we're facing, we simply have to say, just have faith in God. He will bring it to pass. If he made us the promise, the Bible says he cannot lie. He's not a man that he should lie. So if he's made a promise, those promises are yes and amen through Christ Jesus our Lord. So he says here, he gives him a great answer, says, have faith in God. Or, like I said, one of the verses says, trust in God's faithfulness. So, in other words, if you look at God, there's something special about him. There's something that no one else in the universe has. God is faithful. He's never lied. He's never cheated on us. He's never done something for us to scratch our heads. He is always faithful. Good, there's good, good. If you, if you can't trust in man, you can't trust in our government, there's one person that you can hold, wholeheartedly trust in, and that's in God. Because that's he it. Is always faithful. That's it. That's very, very good. Say it again. Trust in uh, God's faithfulness. He is. Trust in his faithfulness. We have, you know, a lot of people have trouble having faith in God, right? They, they're going through an issue, or maybe they believe in God for healing in their body. And, you know, like the man who said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief, right? We yes. all struggle with faith. How do we believe God? Well, one of the easiest ways is to trust in his faithfulness. <laughs> or think about Sarah. Remember he said, God said they were going to have a kid. And Sarah 
did not conceive until she considered him faithful who had promised. So just because God said that she was going to have a kid, she didn't believe that. But she went back and considered God. Considered who he was. Yes. His character. You know, all the things he had done. That yeah. he was faithful. Yes. And you know, we look for faithfulness in our spouses, right? How great. So when we make, we make a promise on the day of our wedding, you know, mm. we promise to be there, let you know, the promise of death do us part, the honor, the love, the respect. And so we believe that our partner, our wife or our husband, is going to be faithful to the very end. And, you know, what a person told me once, I was counseling uh, a couple once, and he, the husband had committed adultery, and, he, you know, they were still struggling. But he said this to me. They've been married for about 15 years. And he said, you know, but I've been faithful for the last 10. <laughs> I said, no, that's not being faithful. You just haven't cheated in the last 10 years. You were supposed to be faithful from day one. That's faithful. And God has been faithful from day one. To me, if, if you've never lied to me, if you've always been there for me. Never lie, still a cheat. Never lie, steal, or cheat. That's right. If you've always had my back, if you're closer to me than a brother, if you'll never leave me nor forsake me, then guess what? I'm going to consider you faithful. You bet. And, and that should really revolutionize our faith. Yes, so really. Yeah, that's we, a... we try to get faith in us, but instead of you know, trying to get strong and faith in us, how about we just trust in the one who's faithful? Yes. Yes. God is faithful Absolutely. to 